for spring break, we were going to raft down the Mississippi in some rafts we bought from Walmart. But we then decided to save this for a later adventure. Instead, me and my friend Tom, to the right, decided to go on a, a hobo trip across America. So we packed our bags, kissed our girlfriends goodbye, and set out for adventure. One of the problems was, though, that none of the cars ever seemed to stop. And on top of this, whenever we would try to get onto a train, it would be going way too fast. So we did a lot of walking. We'd walk along the interstate, and then when the cops would kick us off, we'd have to walk in the ditch. We thought lonely truck drivers would definitely be the ones to pick us up, but never had any luck with semis. We kept walking and got sadder and sadder. But then we thought the future would be a little bit brighter once these people stopped to pick us up. This shot was taken by Eric after he stole my camera. Right now they're discussing whether or not Eric did in fact sell a plasma TV that he stole for crack. Crack, my ass! Don't even play. Don't even play. You're I already know. No, I already know. You're I already crazy. Know. Because you guys took that TV. No. To where? No. No. That was all. Ooh. What? Exactly. You're crazy. Because she I had the cops crazy. kick me out. Crazy she had the cops kick me out of that car. And I took that TV with me around the corner and put my foot through it. I sold a bunch of other TVs for crack. I ain't gonna lie to you about that. First. After making us play some shady rounds of pool, they brought us to Walmart where they had us return some hot items for him. <laughs> Eric had an accomplice in the gas station who could turn his Walmart gift cards that he received for the returned items into solid cash. They then brought us to an old lady's house who was pretty angry that they didn't bring her any whiskey or food. After the whip fight, she held Tom hostage to ensure we would return with some food and whiskey for her. It took about an hour and a half, but eventually I got Eric to return and we got Tom out safely. It was about the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. We made it to Memphis and found a fun hobo playground, but the lack of sleep began to take its toll. It was here that we were able to catch our very first train, but once we hopped on, we noticed something about it that made it a little more dangerous than most. Our train didn't have a floor. There's Tom holding on for his life as we traverse the Mississippi in a train without a bottle. To hold on, we had to put our arms through a hole that went right next to where the wheel was constantly turning. We hopped off this train when it pulled up to an area where giant machines were loading the backs of semis onto parts of the train where we were sitting. Once we got off the train, though, we noticed that we were trapped in about a two-mile-long compound that was barbed-wired in and being patrolled by security guards in little golf carts. We dashed out in front of two security guards and hopped on a train to flee to safety, but that train only went about half a mile and we were still in the place. So we snuck back off, hopped into these little woods here, took a nap, and then crawled our way out of there. We hiked for miles across Arkansas and slept in a little hobo shanty town. We even met some fun hobos along the way. The guy with the gas tank there, he doesn't have a car. And of course, our favorite was Eddie. My name is Eddie. My name is Eddie. My name is Eddie. Now, Eddie's got a pretty awesome story to tell, but if you don't have time for it, just skip ahead two minutes. miles east of Cleveland, Ohio. I spent the Christmas, Christmas Day with, with Jesus under a bridge because it was pouring rain by the buckets. So, 
Every, the whole road was blocked up because of the hurricane. There was one gas station. I met these two girls the day before. So I didn't know what time it was. So I got, I found out it was 3.30, so I was going to go get my cappuccino. And I walked over, and this car, truck is rolling down the highway 50 miles an hour about. It plowed into the Shell station, knocked two bay doors down. They were after the ATM machine. They took the girls' clothes off. Off, didn't hurt them, rape them or nothing, and they took their purses, ripped the phone off the wall, and took the cash register. Then I went inside and I yelled, "Hello, hello!" No response. I hope I go. I hope they weren't stabbed. Jesus. I, I go. My name is Eddie Flighter. I'm from. 30, Cleveland, Ohio, I am law enforcement. And I had a bag of clothes. Some were dirty, some were clean. Put whatever you want on. Ten units arrived after I got that cell phone. And CSI came. And I asked Jesus, should I play Walker, Texas Ranger, trying to get at one of those AKs? And I'm thinking, what if one of those ladies get hit by a stray bullet? I can never live with myself. So they were going to take me out for dinner, and I go, I'll eat at your house. They made me a sirloin steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, my favorite. And they they uh, uh, wanted me to come live with them. So I went to church and I asked the priest and I told him what happened. And the priest said, Eddie, get out of New Orleans now. And he gave me a $50 bill. And I hightailed it out of New Orleans as fast as I could. Eddie then drifted back on his way and we went on ours. Here's Tom looking pretty sad because his family had just been captured by gypsies. This is footage we were using for a later project, but we figured it would help us get a ride. Here he is first spiting the world and then weeping at his terrible loss. Turtles apparently love sitting directly on top of railroad tracks, so as we saw him, we helped him off. God must have smiled at this, because soon after, he sent one of his evangelicals out to pick us up. However, God really didn't seem to like his car. He pulled apart most of the engine and was telling us how that devil didn't want him to make it to church on Sunday. He said before he started going to church, he would drink 60 beers every day, and do a little meth too. Six hours later, we hopped the night train back home. It was beautiful. We watched the sun come up over the Arkansas River and its rays came down and warmed us. But despite its beauty, we still got a little bit of the train crazies after a few hours. The crazies eventually subsided, and that's when I saw the funniest thing happen in my whole life. I had been holding my pee for about the whole trip, and eventually, when I couldn't hold it any longer, I just, I just went. It was only after it was too late to stop the flow that I noticed I was going right on the giant spinning wheel, and poor Tom was just sitting there, completely unaware that he was just being showered in my urine. So there I was, soaking Tom in my pee, and I was just laughing so hard that I just started crying, and I just, I just peed even more. Of course, Tom did fight back in a like fashion. So we saw some pretty cool stuff. We did some pretty stupid things. I, I scared the hell out of my girlfriend. This was really creepy for her. We met some interesting people, and we even got some free pizza for our singing. So it was pretty cool.
Okay. That's pretty good. I thought so.